they simply shouldn't leave. This is literally what the Russian soldiers say when they eliminate their own. 76 Z soldiers were reportedly eliminated in a big ambush in the south. And to make things even worse, in the east, Russian so-called active defense started to fall apart. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. So, today we have something affecting Russian kids. In one of the most recent Russian exhibitions of the developments and achievements of the Russian society, they presented a new chocolate constructor which is aiming obviously at the kids, and this includes Russia with its newly quote-unquote acquired territories, such as Crimea, Zaporozhye, Kherson, and Donbass regions. And long story short, what Russian kids need to do is to assemble new Russia with these newly annexed territories, and then eat them, which kind of makes them disappear. To be honest, this is pretty fascinating, <laughs> what do you think? This is kind of like the Russian government is preparing the mindsets of the regular small Rus Russians that, yeah, we gonna have these new territories, but do not be surprised if one day they are gone. At least this is the mindset, at least this is the message that I'm personally <laughs> receiving from these chocolate boxes. And also, by the way, let me know in the comments if you as a parent would buy something like this to your kid. Um, or if you're just a normal person and you would not do something like this, simply like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will take a look at the statistics and if I see way more than the average number of likes and subscriptions, I know that a lot of you guys are people with a common sense. So, and also this helps the channel a lot, so thank you so much. You can also follow me on Instagram, I'm traveling right now, so you can just follow along. The link is down below. And so yes, first of all, speaking about these drones that Russians are modifying, they basically started to install thermobaric explosives on their existing Shahid drones, which increases its destructive force. What basically happens? according to my limited understanding of physics and some of the war-related equipment, is that a thermobaric explosive creates some, some kind of a cloud inside the closed space, which basically goes around the corners, around the walls, and then this whole mixture ignites, explodes. Pretty much it is almost impossible to hide from it, nowhere behind the walls, not behind the columns, pretty much nowhere, unfortunately. This is a very deadly weapon. But fortunately, Ukrainians continue to receive air defense equipment, which also includes the missiles targeting Russian drones, such as, for example, in this video, Ukrainian soldier is using Maratlet British missile to intercept a Russian drone, and he's doing it quite successfully. Besides that, Ukrainians also use the electronic warfare equipment to interfere with the signal of the Russian drones. And in this next video, you can see how these drones behave under the influence of electronic warfare. And just speaking about the drones, under the initiative of United24 created by President Zelensky, it will be transferring 5000 more drones to the needs of the Ukrainian army. Next we have the statement from Poland, which is pledging 18 more self-propelled guns called crap to Ukraine. And ultimately, Ukrainians themselves, they started producing six Bogdana self-propelled artillery systems completely on their own, which is not my, which might not sound as anything significant, but this is a truly incredible machine. And even six of them per month can and will make a difference. And so yes, now as promised, let's talk about the situation in the south of Ukraine, where a pretty big convoy of Russians has been recently ambushed. And then we'll finalize everything in the east. And so first of all, this last night Russians launched even more, unfortunately, attacks against the territory of Ukraine, which were primarily coming from Crimea. And they were targeting Odessa, Kherson, Mykolaiv, Krapivnitsky, Cherkasy, and going even all the way to the west to Lviv as you can see from this map. 
but Ukrainians were able to intercept 10 out of 17 Russian Shahid drones. And besides the drones, Ukrainian air defense was also able to intercept a strategic Russian bomber Su-24M above the Snake Island. This information has been confirmed by the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. But without a doubt, one of the most significant events recently that happened in the South is that Ukrainians were able to ambush and pretty much destroy the entire military convoy of Russians, which was going next to Hladkivka, and estimatedly 76 Russian soldiers fell into a very deep sleep. There is a video of the devastating consequences of this incident, definitely 100% not allowed on YouTube, but I will share it in the closed archive on my Patreon, so just please go ahead, use the link in the description, but beware, the video is not something probably some of you guys would want to see. And so yes, now let's quickly switch our attention to the east of Ukraine. And first of all, as always, we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Russians continued their offensive along Kupiansk, Svatove, Kremina front line, and reportedly even advanced in some areas, not yet confirmed by this map. On the other hand, Ukrainians were able to destroy a mortar firing position of Russians located in Krasnohara to the north of Bakhmut. And speaking about Bakhmut, right here is the video of one of Ukrainian soldiers from his GoPro. And it shows how Ukrainians are able to advance closer to this city. There is a lot of mortar and artillery fire besides just regular gunfire from the Russian side, so it is extremely complicated for Ukrainians to advance. But they are still able to do it. And just like with all the other footage I'm showing in my episodes, the full uncensored version is also on my Patreon, the link is down below. And as we take a look at this map right now, which shows the changes in territorial control, we can see that unfortunately Russians were able to advance a little bit closer to the north of Hromove, and then as we go a little bit to the south of Bakhmut, we can see that Russians also advanced a little bit closer to the north of Klishivka. As we go even more to the south and talk about Marinka, according to the British intelligence report, this city, even though is it in complete rubbles, in ruins, pretty much there is no city left. The city which used to have 9,000 people before the war. Even though Russians claim that they were able to fully capture this city, reportedly Ukrainians are still holding the control over some western parts. Of Marinka. And speaking about the most complicated area in the east at this very moment, Avdivka, there are extremely heavy fighting happening in the industrial zone and next to the coke factory. It has even been mentioned that Ukrainians are engaging the Russians in heavy fighting to the south of Stepove, located to the northwest of Avdivka, and even reportedly some very small minor counteroffensive success was achieved by Ukrainians. But what is even more important is that Russian Ministry of Defense, and even specifically the Minister of Defense himself, Sergei Shaigu, he continues to call the offensive operations of Russians in Avdivka as an active defense. Which, by the way, most likely it is already pretty obvious for everyone who is following this war closely. It pretty much means that Russians are trying to reduce the expectations of their offensive in this city. Because if you remember from the past, every single time Russians were tactically retreating, tactically relocating, doing a goodwill gesture or doing active defense, it was always kind of when they stalled in their offensive activities, they could not advance any further and were just on the brink of complete failure. Something what Sergei Shaigu is doing more intensely recently. And according to Sergei Shaigu, active defense means taking more advantageous defensive positions. So you can kind of already see it, more advantageous defensive position means somewhere behind the front line, in the trenches, in the bunkers, where they can just sit nice and quiet, without too much combat engagement. The very same thing about this so-called active defense was mentioned by the Ministry of Defense of Russia about Zaporozhye front line several months ago. And this was exactly before that moment when Ukrainians started to recapture some land around Rabotnya Novoprokopivka. 
And just once again, this is exactly the same narrative they are using right now about Avdivka. Because for more than two months of active offensive of Russians against Avdivka, they were pretty much not able to advance anywhere significantly, inflicting on themselves massive losses, even more than those which they suffered in Bakhmut. And as always, every war is cyclical. First there is offensive, then you start switching towards defensive, and then, if you are lucky, if you can still attack, if there is anything left to attack with, then you can switch back to offensive. So, as you can see, Russians were already attacking Avdivka, now they're fully switching towards defensive, but the narrative they are saying is extremely pessimistic, which kinda allows us to assume that maybe this so-called active defense starts to fall apart. And besides that, what is even more absolutely mind-blowing, just, I mean, you already guys know what's the value of the Russian soldier, what's the value of life of the Russian soldier. Unfortunately for them it is close to nothing, close to zero. Like even military vehicles, they take care of them a little bit more than the regular soldiers. But recently something even more absolutely unbelievable was released by the Ukrainian army. They mentioned that they see whenever Russian soldiers are injured and when rescuing them is almost an, not an option or it will be extremely complicated. The Russian officers give the command to eliminate their own soldiers. So they pretty much use the drones with the explosives and they, they put them into even deeper sleep. And I mean, right now, imagine you are a Russian soldier, you are sent to Ukraine under false promises. Most likely you even just came to the military enlistment office just to do a medical exam or to check your documents, just to find yourself in the Ukrainian front line two weeks later with barely any military experience. Then you are immediately given a gun and say, attack in this direction, your goal is to destroy Ukrainian soldiers, if you fail to do this you will go to prison, you will go to jail. Then the officers, they command you to go across open fields with no protection, nothing, Be so you become a very easy target for Ukrainians, obviously. And then you also know that if you are injured, it is pretty much the same as being eliminated, because if you are injured, nobody is coming to save you, and the commanders will be like, they should just be eliminated, they should just be destroyed, it is just way easier, it is way economically advantageous, I mean, instead of saving you, we're just gonna destroy you. So, the question here is, what will be the morale of the Russian soldiers when they know that this is the reality. So yeah, that's definitely not the army and not the regime people are willing to sacrifice their lives for. And guys, if you remember, next week I have extremely personal and very special episodes coming, so if you do not want to miss them, just please, please simply subscribe to my channel, only takes one click. Thank you so much patrons for your support and see you tomorrow.